Hello, everyone. Thank you. Uh, welcome to our fourth um, webinar brought to you by Pictilia Labs. I'm George Follickman, Director of Sales and Business Development for Tilia Labs, and I'm joined by my colleague, Tyler Thompson, Global Director of Solutions and Technologies. Today, we'll be diving into the world of folding cart and production with our award-winning Tilia Phoenix. We will walk you through a few use cases and dig into the ways your pre-press and planning software can directly impact your company's bottom line. This is intended to be an interactive event, so I encourage you all to use the Q&A function of Zoom to ask questions. Our presenters will answer them in real time uh, or during the Q&A session at the end of the webinar. If you enjoyed today's event, please visit sales.tillylabs.com slash events to see our other upcoming webinars. And without further ado, I'll hand it over to Tyler. Great, thanks George. Hey everyone, thank you for joining today. Hope everyone is staying safe. So as George mentioned, uh, my name is Tyler Thompson and I will be hosting your webinar today. I am uh, the solution director here at Tilia, Tilia Labs and I've been in the industry ever since graduating from Clemson University where I got a degree in graphic communications uh, back in 2012. So if there's any Clemson alum uh, call today, go Tigers. And um, yeah, I'm based uh, down here in South Carolina and I also hold a Master of Science degree from Denver University in Computer Information Systems. If you would like to reach out, contact me with questions uh, about this webinar or about just anything in general, um, feel free to contact me, Tyler, at TillyLabs.com. So take a look at our webinar agenda. We're going to start with a quick introduction of Tillia Labs, talk about who we are, and then we're going to move into why do I need Imposition AI and how is Imposition AI going to help? And then we'll take a deep dive. First, we're going to look at planning and estimation using our Imposition AI technology uh, for CAD-based uh, folding carton planning and estimation. And then we will look at how we take that plan uh, or that estimate and move it into pre-press using our drag and drop uh, user experience for CAD-based imposing. And then we'll wrap up at the end with, uh, we'll leave about 15 minutes for questions and answers. So as George mentioned, um, <clears throat> throughout the webinar, <clears throat> feel free to uh, use the, the, the Zoom chat feature at the bottom and uh, ask questions and we'll answer them, try our best to answer them at the end. So a little bit about Tilio Labs, we're a software company and we are only a software company. We're not um, tied to any hardware vendor or manufacturer, we are agnostic. Um, so we're an agnostic software company in the industry. We focus on developing products specifically for printing and packaging. And in 2019, this past year, we won our, uh, an Intertech award for true AI. Um, and that is uh, our true AI technology is what we're gonna focus on today. And yeah, just a, just a little bit about Tilia Labs. We're, we were founded back in April of 2012, so we're a relatively newer uh, software company in the industry. We're based in, <coughs> in Ottawa, Canada. And uh, we have a, a development team that sits in um, Toronto, and we also have a, a dev and QA team that sits in Japan. And then here in the US, we have uh, sales, marketing, and uh, support and technical sales. So year to date, we have uh, just over 500 licenses sold of, of Phoenix. So it's a very mature product and we grew very fast uh, over the last uh, seven, eight years. And we have global distribution in over 32 countries thanks to our uh, excellent distribution and, and reseller arm. I know a lot, of, uh, a lot of you are on the call today, so really appreciate your support. Uh, and I just checked right before we jumped on and we had just, I think 23 countries um, on on this this webinar. So it's pretty crazy to to see everyone tuning in. So thanks for your time. Uh, Tilia Lab. So we have what we're going to focus on is our flagship product, Phoenix. We also have uh, Tilia Griffin, which is a subset of Phoenix, um, which we developed specifically for the sign and wide format space. And we have also a product, Tilia Aries which is a, also a subset of Phoenix, is focused around label step and repeat. 
Um, <clears throat> we had webinars that covered those products. You can uh, get in touch with our, our sales team or check out our YouTube channel to, to see those. Um, and then we also offer our Artelia Cloud, which is our cloud-based licensing system. So um, <clears throat> what we want to focus on today is answering this question of how do we make planning, production planning smarter. So we hear this term AI being used a lot. In fact, uh, if, if, if you didn't realize it, it's, it's being used really all around us to help us in, in many aspects of our life. Uh, it's providing convenience for us with tools like Facebook or, or Apple by scanning your face um, and making it easier to unlock your phone or detect pictures. It's beating us in, in games, right, through Google with AlphaGo in, in strategic games. It's, it's even overlaying information, you know, in our cars to help us uh, easier, you know, make it easier for us to understand where we're going. And uh, it's even got to the point where AI is driving our cars and making it even more convenient for us to uh, navigate uh, around our, our country, around our town. So we see this in the automotive industry. We see this also in, you know, in, in science where pathologists are using uh, AI to help understand cancerous versus non-cancerous cells. So, you know, the, the, the tech industry kind of, you know, in, in, in the tech thought leaders boil it down to this really simple statement. It's take blank and add AI. And we see this happening all over. We see it happening with, uh, with vehicles, with social media, with our shopping, you know, with searching on the web, banking, right? So, you know, we see AI being used uh, in all aspects of our life and helping us out and, and helping professionals in their life uh, make their process more efficient. And what Tilia Labs is seeking to do is, is take planning and add AI. So this concept of production planning is typically, you know, a, a manual uh, challenging process of taking your orders and, and figuring out the most effective, cost-effective way of uh, converting those orders in your manufacturing environment. And in many cases, we still see this workflow that uh, you see on screen, which is this rubber cement kind of manual paste up on a, you know, B1 press sheet um, and have a planner physically cutting out samples and nesting them up on a, on a sheet for production planning purposes. And this process is laborious and long and is typically, you know, two to three days of, of time in production planning, another day or two to take that plan and, and convert it to a CAD file. And then that CAD is sent down to pre-press, which then takes another, you know, one to two hours to impose. So it's a very challenging problem. And, and the reason it's so challenging is, well, it's because uh, of, of scenarios like this. So we have uh, this very common question of, you know, here's my press sheet, here's a, a B1 press sheet, and here is a, a SKU that the customer ordered 50,000 uh, quantity. And it's a nine by nine. Um, and the question is always, you know, how many of, of these items are gonna fit on our press run? And then we're trying to figure out, well, okay, how many press sheets is that gonna take? And how many, you know, press changeovers or how many forms is it gonna take to run this job? So if you do some pretty simple math, this, this problem isn't too challenging, right? If you answered eight, uh, then you were correct. And, you know, this, this, this problem is, uh, you know, for, for most planners, pretty easy to digest, right? You're looking at one SKU, it's a self-run job, um, one item per sheet, and uh, it's pretty easy to calculate. But it gets a little bit more complex and the permutations start growing when we introduce more than one SKU. So in this scenario here, we have, you know, uh, the same, you know, nine by nine with a quantity of 50,000 and another now uh, SKU nine by nine, which is running at 25,000. And we've also introduced uh, another ink, so Pentone 186. And then the question is, well, okay, how many sheets, how many press runs, how many forms, how many out am I going to get to fulfill this job? And again, it's not terribly challenging. You have uh, really kind of two options in this scenario, right? You can, you can run one press run and eliminate a press cleanup, but we're going to overrun uh, SKU number two by 20%. 
So this is going to result in 10,000 sheets total to fulfill this job in only one press run. Or uh, alternatively, we can split this out onto self runs. So we can run this as uh, two press runs, right? Which saves us, uh, you can see, you know, about 1,400, 1,600 sheets. Um, but we've now introduced another press changeover and a press cleanup. So, you know, what is the most cost effective way to, to actually run this job? Well, that of course is, is dependent on, on a number of different variables, but it gets even further complex when we aren't just looking at, you know, a square, right? So when we have a, a folding carton that has a shape or any, any carton that has a shape, um, then the question is, it's the same, like how, how many out can we fit on a sheet? And typically the industry is, is answering this question by looking at the outer dimensions or the bounding box of the shape and doing some basic rough math, right? So again, it's, well, it's easier to do in millimeters here, but um, you know, we can get six up. So we can go three, three across, two down. And that gives us a total at 50,000 of 8,334 sheets. But what happens, you know, if instead uh, you can see a lot of waste due to the, the outer bounding box, right? What happens if we nest these items? So if instead we don't look at the outer bounding box or the outer dimensions, but rather we nest these items, you can see we're going to get um, uh, nine up and, and, you know, get about 33% more uh, on this sheet than we did by using the outer bounding box. So you know, when, when shapes are involved, it gets even, you know, there, there's even more permutations, but further when we, you know, are trying to deal with more than just one or two skews at a time, uh, it becomes nearly impossible for a human to, to plan and, and understand the most cost effective way to run these jobs. And in most cases, you know, our folding carton converters aren't just dealing with one or two jobs, they're dealing with, you know, several hundred jobs a day. So the reason this is so challenging is because of all of the different variables in print, right? We have, you know, uh, a number of different SKUs that we're trying to plan for production for that day. We have varying different quantities, different presses that this, uh, you know, your, your uh, production jobs can run on, um, different ways of routing your, jo your jobs through manufacturing, um, different stocks, different stock sizes, different stock costs. We run at Flexo, we run at Digital. Right, the number of, of possible combinations becomes almost impossible to comprehend. And you know, then the, the, the question is like, why, why is this for, for a packaging converter, why is this so important? Um, why is this concept of, of planning? Why do we need to solve this problem? Well, the industry is, um, you know, the, the brand owners uh, are, are pressuring the printer converter and challenging the printer converter to you know, not run longer uh, SKUs, but rather, you know, run shorter run lengths. Uh, they're increasing or, or proliferating their, um, their SKUs. So their product extension isn't just one flavor, it's several, you know, 10, 20 flavors. Um, the sizes are changing. We have promotional products, right? So we have an increased number of SKUs. We have shorter run lengths and the brand owner is asking us to turn this around in the same or less time and, and also decrease our cost in manufacturing. So this problem of, of planning is, is really where, you know, we can start saving and, and understanding and looking at, you know, these shorter run lengths and, and make it more profitable. So this is what we're, we're seeking to solve, this, this concept of, uh, of human planning. That leads us into the introduction of Imposition AI. And Imposition AI is the industry's first artificially intelligent uh, planning and imposition algorithm. So Tilia Phoenix is an AI-driven planning and imposition tool. And what Phoenix is capable of doing is looking at uh, in, uh, a large data set and taking your one or many orders with your uh, uh, varying run lengths, your varying overs and unders specified, um, and evaluate, you know, your different sheet sizes, running it and routing it on, uh, you know, your offset press, your digital press, um, and evaluating all the different combinations thereof in a very quick and efficient way. So how does it work? Well, one, we need to help our human planners. Right? Human planners have a very challenging 
problem that they're trying to solve every single day. And uh, we need to provide them with better tools. Next, we need to make those tools smart. So we need to train our, our AI and model our production environment um, inside of Phoenix. And then once we have the combination of a human and AI technology, we can use that to increase uh, our margins in planning. So, you know, helping human planners, well, humans retire, of course, um, they need vacations uh, and they go home in the evenings and they are typically taking the path of least resistance. So for a human to be asked to look at, you know, uh, 10 or, or 15 uh, orders at the same time is, is challenging. So that is why we see in most cases, uh, you know, a, a human planner only dealing with one or, or two jobs at the same time. And uh, when it comes to looking at this large data set, you know, computers are, are definitely the most efficient way of solving the problem. And then when we train our AI, we need to make Phoenix aware of your production environment. So Phoenix needs to understand the cost of your presses, needs to understand uh, the speeds of your presses, your finishing equipment, your stocks, uh, your make ready costs, your change over time. You want Phoenix and this, this AI technology to be as smart as physically possible so that it can find the best results. So if we take a look at this, we'll, we'll quickly just model a CD102 press and we make Phoenix aware of the speed of that press, the cost per hour to run that press. So it's a, every, every device is a cost center. Um, the make ready time per color, the minimum run length, the constraints of the press, so the minimax sheet size that it can run and stock thickness, the number of colors on that press. You make Phoenix understand the marks that you're using so that if it uses that particular press, it will automate generation of, of the production marks in an intelligent way. And you can get very granular with the way that you're setting up your press. So setting up your, you know, modeling your setup time, modeling your make ready and your time uh, of, of make ready per color, your waste, your running waste. And then you do the same thing with your stocks. You make Phoenix aware of your stocks and your stock sizes and your cost of those things. And also finishing. So, you know, a, a big component of um, a folding carton, of course, is uh, understanding if we should use an existing die or if we should um, go and purchase out a, a steel rule die. And you make Phoenix aware of the cost of doing those things. So you can set up your costing for your uh, steel rule flat or rotary die, your cost per each line type, um, and the constraints of your constraints and speeds of your die cutters. So once Phoenix has that information, uh, then Phoenix is capable of evaluating, um, you know, your your thirty six items. For example, you can see at the bottom right there, uh, Phoenix is evaluating within you know 10, 15 seconds some. 3,000 different ways of, uh, of, of running and comboing these jobs. So let's take a deeper dive here. Um, we're going to run through, like I said at the beginning, a couple of examples. We're going to start with um, folding carton uh, using Imposition AI for planning and estimation of many items. And then we'll move into uh, the same style with many SKUs. And then we'll move into a demo of, uh, of free press. So in this scenario here, uh, we're going to start with, you can see a data sheet. And this data sheet is a CSV file, which contains all of your order information um, for our estimate or for our plan, our production plan. In this case, I, I pulled this one out of FileMaker, but you can see um, on the left-hand column there, we've got our the name of the order. We've got the order quantity specified. We've got our grain direction, our stock, our minimax overs. And in this case, I don't have any artwork. I just have to find the inks. So I just dragged that file into Phoenix and Phoenix will go grab and assign all of the properties of the order to each individual um, line in our products list here. And also go grab the CAD file that the customer ordered and attach the quantities. So then I'm going to start with, uh, I'm going to start how most, what we see in, in most scenarios for, for a folding carton converter, where we're going to plan or estimate this job um, with a single product per sheet. So we're going to do self runs here. So we have 36 uh, items that were ordered. You can see in the list on the left. 
And we're going to ask Phoenix to not combo any of these items, but rather uh, build self runs on a 40 inch B1 press sheet uh, on our CD 102. So um, you can see I'll click run and within about uh, a second or so, Phoenix um, just figured out uh, the best uh, maximum number out for each of these items, right? Um, and has built our, uh, our CAD files nearly instantaneously and um, costed the job. You can see the, once I apply it in the top left there, we can see the total, total run length to fulfill this order. So 35,000 sheets, uh, it's gonna cost us about $28,000 to run it this way, um, running single self runs, single item per sheet. And we're gonna be on press for about 47 hours. So, um, you know, this, uh, th this, this process of, of Phoenix being able to, to quickly compute um, nest and, and build your dies is, uh, is extremely beneficial, but further, um, you know, it, it calculated and figured out the copy count for each one of these press runs. So that's going to cost us twenty-eight about thousand dollars. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask Phoenix to uh, run a uh, ganging profile. So I'm going to keep my items in rows, uh, vertical rows, so that uh, it's going to be more efficient coming off of our box die cutter. Um, but I want Phoenix to now combo these items up to try and reduce our costs. So. Um, you know, Phoenix uh, at first did 36 press runs, that's 36 make readies, you know, self runs, 36 press cleanups. Now Phoenix is going to start comboing these uh, to try and reduce cost, reduce changeover, reduce material consumption. And you can see at the bottom right here, Phoenix is, is uh, running through all of the different permutations by taking these 36 um, items here that were ordered across our five different presses against our, you know, six different uh, sheet sizes and uh, keeping them in, in rows, right? So it's easier to convert. And you can see we now have taken uh, what was uh, 36 press runs down to nine by uh, allowing Phoenix to combo in rows. Still nesting um, and reduce our cost from, from $28,000 uh, doing self runs in 47 hours on press down to $9,000 in only 19 hours on press. So, you know, this, although uh, in many cases you would say, well, you know, I'm probably never going to use this die again. The, um, you know, cost savings that we're seeing right from, from doing self runs and, and trying to store and reuse and maintain those dies versus just kind of running these, uh, these dies one time, you know, uh, Phoenix is, is able to quickly build your die, compute and, and figure out the cost of, of uh, doing it each way. Now I'm going to do one more scenario here. I'm going to allow Phoenix to aggressively combo these. So just using the default profile, Phoenix is taking all of these 36 items here and um, you know, running a, a complete optimization and comboing our, uh, comboing the, uh, the orders um, on our press sheet as efficiently as possible. And in this scenario, we further reduce the number of, uh, of press runs from nine down to four and further reduce our costs from 9,000 down to 5,000. So Phoenix is capable of, of um, yeah, handling, estimating and planning uh, your folding carton jobs, uh, you know, as single self runs, as, as combos and rows, or um, uh, even adding more logic um, or aggressively comboing these orders to um, create the most optimization as, as possible. So now we're going to look at, uh, that those were all different um, unique items. Now we're gonna look at the same item. Um, so it's the same box style, but just uh, looking at many SKUs and how Phoenix can handle um, a scenario where you have a uh, same item, but, but many SKUs, which is obviously very common. Um, with uh, with skew proliferation. So in, in this scenario here, you can see the the again. I'm starting with the CSV file to reduce the amount of uh, information I have to type in here. But I've got my copy count and my order quantity from the customer, 
and this this is ranging from you know uh, anywhere from from thirty five thousand up to you know half a million um, in in some scenarios here. So it's a really good large uh, set of of orders ranging all over the place. I'm just going to drag that CSV file, and then again, Phoenix is going to go find those uh, those CAD files and and create a product for each order. So instead of thirty six products, you can see I've got one hundred and forty two uh, products that I'm going to plan. And these are all running on the same same shape. But again, I'm gonna well, I'm gonna run a do a single self run. So this is we should expect 142 press forms here, which we do. And Phoenix then has calculated the uh, the cost, right? So that's gonna if we run it this way, it's gonna take 142 press runs, right? 201 hours on press. Um, so Phoenix has, has calculated all of all of our costing, our our cost for our plates, our cost for our stock, our cost for our press time and setup. And now uh, I'm going to ask Phoenix to take the same job, so 194,000, and take this job and start the, aggressively comboing these to reduce our cost, combo our items as efficiently as possible. And there is an infinite number of ways, right, to take these 142 items across our, even just our one press and one stock size. Um, you can see as we keep waiting, uh, we're down to about $115,000. You can see it's just going to keep going down. Um, Phoenix is just continuing to pump out results. So within about 30 seconds here, we've got some 2,000 odd results to, to look at. Fast forward a bit here, and I'm happy with this. So we went down from 142 press runs down to 16, uh, and shaved off about $90,000 in, in cost savings here by allowing Phoenix to um, plan our, our job. So the result of this, um, of Phoenix's calculations, is of course your, your fully imposed uh, print-ready PDF if you have your artwork and your dies uh, to send to your die vendor or internally for die making. But Phoenix also generates this report and I like to look at this report because uh, it shows, so th this is the report of the job we just ran um, and it shows you know, your, your total run length for that job. It shows all of your press forms. So we had 14 press forms, your total cost and time on press. Um, and gives you a nice production report to, to send into, uh, into production. So um, shows you each press form. And then from that CSV file, each row of that CSV file, each order is also pulled out into this report. Um, and it shows the, you know, what, what the customer ordered, total that the customer ordered, the total that Phoenix calculated, including the overrun and the stock that it, it was ordered on and the size. Um, but what I like to point out here is the, uh, you know, the customer ordered in this case 106,000. And what Phoenix said is, is the most cost effective way to run this job is to actually overrun it by about 35%. And in a lot of cases, customers will, will immediately start pushing back. But, um, you know, Phoenix has the ability to understand, you know, what typically, uh, a planner would 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 have a challenging time of doing. So, what Phoenix is suggesting here is that you know what what normally would happen is a planner would maybe allow for five percent, maybe ten percent overrun, um, and then they're going to move that to a new press form. And every time you know you move to another press form, that incurs cost, and Phoenix knows those costs, right? It knows that it's at least four more sets of plates. It's another press changeover and cleanup at, you know, an hour and, and 30 minutes uh, at $380 an hour. You know, Phoenix is, is suggesting in this case, hey, let's sneak it on an existing press run and you're going to overrun a little bit, but that's actually more cost effective. So we're just going to wrap up here now with uh, um, taking these estimates and running them through pre-press. So showing the, uh, the drag and drop in positioning, um, digital in positioning in, in uh, Phoenix. So in this scenario here, I'm going to start with a, uh, I'm going to create a digital production layout and I'm just going to drag in my product here and I'm going to set my order quantity to 5,000 and specify my stock 
and I'm going to drag in my, I'm going to run this on my Indigo 10,000. So you can see my, my sheet size is already built. I'm going to change it and I can search for my die in my die database because I want to run my four up die, which I know is going to fit on my 10,000. And then I just simply drag and drop that product onto my die. And Phoenix's pattern matching and auto snap algorithm will detect the shape and snap it right into place. I drag and drop my marks and now I'll add my one up production marks. So I'm gonna add my slur marks in here. And just drag those into my flap and my date code. And I'll add a gradation strip here for my G7 calibration and my barcode and a product number here. There we go. So now this is ready for press. Further, Phoenix calculated uh, the cost in its live job report based on my quantity. Uh, Phoenix auto calculated the copy count to run it on our digital press. It says it's going on our 10,000 on a 25 by 20 inch sheet and we're off and running. Now I'm gonna take that same job and I'm going to move that job from digital to our offset press. So <clears throat> here's our job, we just ran digital. Now the customer called back and says, hey, uh, you know, a lot of our customers ordered these and we need now instead of 5,000, 75,000. So Phoenix knows that uh, the cost of running a digital versus conventional and now we can quickly just reevaluate and set up our production and move it in pre-press from digital to conventional by dragging in our press, by dragging in, we now have a, a nine out die that's gonna run on our, on our box. And I can go through and, and interactively now start handling my bleed overlaps for our conventional press because this is knife to knife. So you can see Phoenix is going to intelligently take you through and navigate you through, back up a little bit, navigate you through uh, and highlight all of the areas where we have, uh, where we have bleed overlaps and then take you through and allow you to handle those bleed overlaps interactively. So I can resolve, overlap, set my flaps, make sure that my, my printing facing areas are, are exposed and my glue flaps are tucked under. And then I set up my plates for conventional instead of digital, uh, or my, my marks, so I add my slur marks, my date codes and my takeoff bars. And then the last thing we'll do is, again, just to, in pre-press build a digital and an offset job here. So um, I'm gonna create an, an offset and digital form and I'm gonna do a combination here. So you can see in, in this particular uh, form, we've got all the great items and now I want to uh, include my a combo run for my uh, apple and green apple. So I can add my marks and then one up just by dragging and dropping some pre-built marks that I've got, my slur marks, my gradations, my barcodes. So I'll do that for each one of these here. And then what I'm gonna do is go back to my form and just again, simple drag and drop. Uh, I can grab these items and pop in my grapes and then pop in my green apple. So again, we have tools for both uh, auto in positioning and calculation as well as uh, you know, in, in pre-press tools to help and facilitate the, the manual um, in positioning and in planning for uh, um, for our, our, our manual workflow. So just to wrap up here, if we if we plan smarter, we're we're going to save money. And um, you know, for what we did was a, a really interesting case study. In fact, we did we did two case studies. Um, I'm just I'm showing you one here, which is a, a folding carton converter here in the U.S. that was doing about fifty million dollars in uh, in revenue annually. And in 2018, you can see at the top there, manual, uh, they were dealing with about, in 2018, we, we, we tracked and, and understood um, the number of items per month that they were working with. And the average number of those items um, that were on a press sheet uh, was about 2.1 um, prior to implementing Phoenix. So if we know the average number of items that they're running a month and we know that average number uh, of items up on a press sheet per month, that then gives us the amount of changeovers per month that we have uh, incurred. 
and you can see the cost variables to the right. They, uh, we, we took their average changeover, which was about 1.4 hours. And the hourly rate of their press was about $208 an hour. And that gives us our, our total changeover cost. So in 2018, the total changeover cost was about 277,000. Once we implemented Phoenix, we increased the number of items up per month because of, uh, of course, the, the intelligent planning and nesting algorithm from 2.1 to 2.5. Doesn't seem like that much, but that reduced the number of, uh, of, of, of course, changeovers in production and uh, gave us a, a net savings of $46,000 per month in, in just changeover costs. And that doesn't include the amount of uh, open capacity now that we've uh, introduced on press, right? Because we've, we've now reduced the number of changeovers, um, that means we've also reduced the amount of time that that, 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 that press is, uh, uh, is actually being ran. So that incurred a, an extra 222 hours of open capacity on, uh, at this particular location that could be sold on. So the, the savings are, um, I mean, the, the savings speak for themselves. Um, you know, a slight increase on an average number of up per press form can, can show a, a very large savings and change over costs. So just to wrap it up, um, yeah, it also just saves time and sanity, right? Uh, we, we eliminate the, the amount of human planning and we supplement their human planning with uh, AI-driven technology. Um, we reduce the, the amount of time that it's taking to build these CAD layouts and to impose and prepress. So, George, that leaves us about uh, 10 or 15 minutes here for, for questions. Um, yeah, Tyler, thank you. Uh, excellent presentation. Uh, really, really interesting. Uh, we had a lot of engagement um, coming in through the, the chat and the Q&A and uh, even a couple from email. So um, yeah, it, 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 folks, if you have uh, any questions, please feel free to, to uh, use the Q&A button at the bottom of the Zoom meeting to, uh, to ask your questions. Uh, I'm going to get into it here. Tyler, uh, the first question that we had and, and comes up a lot, um, is this compatible with other workflows uh, or MIS systems that are already in place at our customers' facilities? Yeah, good question. So um, I kind of breezed over, you know, the, the full functionality of Phoenix, of course, and to, to keep the, the, the meeting brief, but um, the result of Phoenix is a fully imposed production-ready um, file and we can output that file in a number of ways. We can output that file as a um, as a as a JDF file, so a fully imposed uh, JDF file that would get sent directly to a workflow. So um, you know, it could be uh, you know any any of your uh, JDF compatible prepress workflow systems. Um, as a JDF file, or we can also export a fully imposed high-res print-ready PDF file that gets sent to your digital RIP or to directly to your uh, your uh, CTP device um, to be screened and ripped. And then for cutting, um, so for your dies, we export the industry standard uh, CAD file formats, so CF2, DXF, PDF, um, cutting JDF files for your, for your guillotine cutters or for your, uh, for your deck cutters. Awesome. Uh, another question, Tyler, um, you mentioned teaching Phoenix about costs and capabilities. Um, is this part of the configuration and training or is this some kind of consultative service that, uh, Tilia labs offers? What, what exactly do you mean when you say teach and, and how do we, how do we do that? Yeah. So, Good question. Um, what I mean by teach is, is essentially fill in uh, Phoenix or, or make Phoenix knowledgeable of your press environment, production environment, and costing. So we do. We offer we offer online uh, or in person training um, through uh, Tilia Labs or, or through our, our distribution network. Um, and with Phoenix, you know, you 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 have the ability to uh, import your, your presses or, or specify your, your different uh, uh, printing offset or digital or, or uh, roll-fed printing presses and, and finishing equipment. And 
in when you're when you're specifying your device and modeling your production environment, you're coming in here and setting up your your costing. So that's what I mean by by teaching. And, and with stocks, um, you can import this directly from your ERP system to make it faster, right? Via CSV. So you can quickly uh, bring in your, your stock library from your business system and your costing uh, and map that right into Phoenix to make it aware of your stock and stock sizes. Excellent. Uh, along the same lines, Tyler, we had another question. Uh, how long does it take to learn to use Phoenix? Yes, that's it. That's a good question. So, um, you know, hopefully what you gathered out of uh, the webinar today is, is our, our passion for, you know, user experience and user interface design. I mean, we, you know, we, we, we've, we developed uh, Phoenix on a very modern uh, software stack. So we feel it's extremely easy to use. Our customers would attest that it's very quick and easy to use. Um, but there is a learning curve, right? There is a, we, we typically do, you know, two sessions of online training to get you set up in, in using Phoenix. And then we have our online documentation and uh, tutorials online to actually, you know, in many cases, get our customers up and running without, um, you know, direct uh, training support through our online videos. Um, but typically, I guess, you know, it, it's, it's about eight hours worth of, uh, of online training to get started in Phoenix. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, we had a couple questions here that are kind of related. Uh, how accurate are the cost estimates? And can Phoenix estimate die making cost as well? Yeah. So again, you need to make Phoenix as smart um, by modeling uh, your costing as close as physically possible if you want uh, an accurate um, uh, understanding of cost, right? But um, the cost is all about the machine time. And uh, right, that, that's, that's a combination of, of things like your setup and your make ready and, and your, your uh, cost center, your hourly rate of running the press. And yeah, so answering the question about, about, um, about finishing, um, if you have a flatbed die cutter, uh, you can come in here and actually cost out what your, um, what your cost is going to be to not only run your die cutter, but also build a, a die if a die doesn't exist in your library. So that can be a steel rule die, a solid die, or a flexible die. And then you attach costing at the, um, at the different line types. So your you know, your cuts and your creases and your matrix crease and your perforations, you can come in here and set costing, um, you know, per, uh, per linear inch, or there's a number of ways to express your costing. So you can get an idea of, um, as Phoenix is generating these, these combo forms, get an idea of what it's going to cost to actually produce that, um, that die and then actually run that die on your, on your die cover. Awesome. You can see uh, my screen still, right, George? Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we've got time for two more questions. Uh, the first one I'm going to ask is, uh, Tyler, you showed two scenarios. You showed uh, kind of a planning scenario and a pre-press scenario. Uh, you also showed kind of an estimating scenario. Uh, do you need two copies of Phoenix or a copy of Phoenix per each one of these scenarios? Or um, is, is there another way that we can uh, kind of license Phoenix? Yeah, so um, f you certainly can have more than one seat, but it's, it's not a requirement. Um, we have the ability uh, with our Tilia cloud licensing server to allow our customers um, to share and float their license. Um, and that, that's nice because you could purchase one license of Phoenix and install it on several machines in your in your facility and also on laptops, right? And you can use this uh, in the office or out of the office by using our, our cloud licensing. So working from home is, is not an issue and um, being able to share, you know, your one license or, or you can have several licenses in the cloud, uh, which allows your users to access um, and pull those licenses from their, uh, from their installation. Similar to like a, Adobe, you know, Illustrator, um, you log in and, and you, you acquire a license. So um, Tyler, I'm going to end on this one. And this is, this is not a softball question. We're going to go over just a little bit, but I think it's a really, really good question. Uh, and we'll put your computer science degree to, uh, to the test as well. Oh boy. Um, 
why AI uh, as opposed to maybe some other rules-based programs that are out on the market? Ooh, that, that's, a, that's a really good question. Um, and I think, uh, you know, without, without getting too scientific here, the easiest way to answer that question is um, just processing speed, right? Like you couldn't depend on just a static uh, algorithm to kind of brute force its way uh, in finding, you know, uh, the most cost effective way to, to run your jobs, especially when you're, you know, the, the, the kind of brute force approach is okay if you're dealing with, you know, only a, a handful of permutations. But, you know, hopefully you gathered out of that presentation that the number of permutations when you start evaluating, you know, uh, 50 different stock sizes, um, you know, a, a quantity ranging from anywhere, you know, with, with overruns and, and underruns, um, a number of products, and evaluating that across several presses. I mean, there is an infinite number of, of, of possible answers uh, to solve the problem. So, you know, a, a brute force type, just static algorithm would never accomplish, you know, what, what Phoenix can accomplish in its ability to, to use AI to look at an extremely large data set and search base and hone in on, you know, what is the most cost effective way to, to plan and produce my jobs. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks, Tyler. Um, well, we had quite a few more questions that are going unanswered. Um, so keep an eye out for a follow-up email from Tilia Labs. Um, we'll, we'll try to um, kind of put all those uh, questions together and, and make sure they all get answered and, and uh, out to everyone. Um, I want to thank everyone again uh, who took some time out of their day to join us. Um, I, uh, yeah, we, we will send a recording of this uh, webinar out as well with the uh, follow-up email. Uh, I encourage you to sh share it with your colleagues or post it to social media. Um, we love the attention, we're millennials. Uh, and then <laughs> uh, finally, we have two more webinars that are coming uh, up here in the next couple of weeks. We have one that is specifically focused on digital corrugated uh, and the other one is gonna be very specifically focused on commercial print. So you can sign up for uh, those at sales.tillialabs.com slash events. Thank you, everyone, and have a fantastic day.